So, this is what is the uh, main body of the code, but and there are a few buts. There are some more points to discuss. First thing you want to say that typically for the Leonard Jones interaction, you can choose d t equal to 0 0.005. And by convention, in most cases, uh, one can also take m to be 1. So, what does this d t equal to 0 0.005 mean? I mean, what is the unit of time? We will discuss it, it has to wait, I cannot discuss all the things at, at once. So, we will be discussing units, but typically if you have Leonard Jones uh, with epsilon equal to 1, d t equal to 0 0.005 works pretty good. And what does pretty good mean? We have to run the code, look how well energy is conserved, if momentum is conserved and so on and so forth. We can typically choose as m equal to 1, but uh, there are these quantities like uh, d t into d t into 0 0.5 by m. So, there is no point. So, you are, when you are doing this calculation, right, there is no point in writing it like this because this calculation d t into d t by m into 0 0.5, we are doing it all the time in each in each of these um, iteration and all uh, iteration when I, I mean i equal to like 3 into n part every time it is doing this algebra and you are doing it so many times over n iterations over every time step. Instead, if you basically replace this quantity by some other variable d t 2 d t square by 2 say d t so you can write it like this d t square by 2 you can at least remember it right at the beginning of the code. And here like you have 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.5 half by m into d t. If you basically write this as d t by 2 right at the beginning of the code uh, outside this loop essentially right. Then the, you save the computer time uh, because the computer does not have to do this multiplication uh, every time. You might think okay to do a multiplication it, take, it takes with gigahertz like in one nanosecond or something like that. Uh, but then uh, you have a large number of particles, you are going to calculate uh, distances, uh, you are going to do this uh, for a large number of particles over multiple iterations. So, finally, it takes time and every time it is doing a calculation, this is like uh, 3 multiplications, 1 division, it takes time. So, you should just replace these by suitable variables. So, these details the molecular dynamics are important, you do not write it like this, right. The other thing is okay, even before we go to the body of the so called m d code, when n n equal to 1 that is the first iteration, you need the velocity of the particles, you need the force of the particles and you need the position of the particles. So, what have we not discussed here? Initialization. How do we initialize the position of the particles, the velocity and of the particles? If you know the position, you can calculate the force because force depends upon the distance between the particles, right. So, even before we come to the body of the MD code, we need to discuss initialization, right. So, here, here is essentially the body of the code, here basically the program mold in starts, here it ends. But before that, we have to define, we have to define suitable variables and these variables can be read. You can give them on screen or you can write them on a small um, a separate file and you have to define definitely L x, L y, L z. Typically, at least for the beginning, you can choose to be a cubic box. So, all three directions they have the same size and so L x equal to L y equal to L z. You have to choose n part the number of particles, you have to choose the value of r cut or r c which is the cut off distance of the potential, write it you have to explicitly mention it. And once you have your value of the r c then you can calculate the so called f c what is the value of the force at the cut off and then you have to calculate also v dash c v the potential the mod uh, the value of the modified potential at the cutoff those are quantities which you do not need to calculate every time you calculate the force because those are fixed values you want to save computing calculation time right. So, as soon as you have access to this quantity you calculate the value of f c you calculate the value of v dash c which you are going to use later whenever you calculate the force. Other than that, you have to mention the how many iterations, 
you want to run your code for uh, that will depend of course upon the physics that you want to uh, want to extract from the system the how many iterations how many independent runs you need to run uh, that uh, once you are running an MD in a regular manner you get get a hang of the, that but anyway for testing you can choose it to be 1000 uh, and not 1000 10000 iterations 1 lakh iterations 10 lakh iterations just as we were doing for molecular for the Ising model then you should uh, and you could initialize the random number generator you might need it and you will can need it even to initialize the position of the particles and the velocity of the particles so how does one initialize the position of the particles suppose this is your uh, simulation box of size L x cube assuming L x equal to L y equal to L z your final physics your final uh, um, distribution of particle positions and the velocities of these particles is not going to depend upon your initial position just like in Ising model you can start with any initial configuration the easiest would be to you put all the particles you put all n particles at equal distances from each other and once the force starts acting and since they have initial velocities of as soon as you start the molecular dynamics of course they are going to move around in space and uh, how they are distributed whether they are clumped whether they are all far apart from each other on an average will this will be decided by the potential the density the temperature the thermodynamic quantities but just to start off you can just put them all at equidistance from each other say at a distance of I do not know 2.3 or depends upon the density also if it is highly packed you cannot uh, fit all the particles of the box if you start with distance of uh, 3 each particle is surrounded by neighbors which are at a distance of 3 sigma. So, here distances as I said in the last class is measured in units of sigma. So, so you set sigma equal to 1 the diameter of a particle equal to 1 and when you mention L x you say ok my simulation box is 50 times the diameter of a particle all right so that has been assumed so when i say that the distance between any pair of particles in the initial condition is 3 i actually mean 3 sigma where sigma has been set equal to 1 okay so that, that that's a possible initial position is basically sitting on a, a lattice of course the lattice is going to melt or not melt depending upon the p potential and the density and the temperature so, or it could go into some other crystalline form here I am just talking about a simple cubic lattice one could always start a Leonard Jones simulations from a lattice simulation or you could choose well you know that you do not find that uh, comfortable you can choose put particles randomly in the box you generate a random number uh, uh, generator for uh, multiply it into L x it will be some number between 0 and L x and you say ok I shall place the first particle at this x coordinate and then you generate another random number multiplied by L y and that will be another some number between 0 and L y which is basically the size of the box and you can do similar things for the z coordinate of the particle and you put you say that you ok I put it randomly somewhere inside the box. But when you put the second particle you should ensure that the distance of the second particle and the first particle is greater than sigma because if you by chance you put it right on top because you are using a random number generator you put them right on top of each other right that would lead to extremely large forces as soon as the simulation starts. So, typically when you put the second particle you do not have any problem typically the random numbers which are chosen you, you can put it some other point uh, in the simulation box, but as you put more and more particles there is larger and larger probability that one of the particles will sit on the top of an already introduced particle. So, if you want to basically introduce particles randomly we want to place particles randomly in a simulation box then you have to take suitable precautions you have to write a code and check that when you are introducing a new particle one of those n part particles that they do not overlap with a previously already introduced particle right uh, you can do it 
or just put all the particles on a lattice at suitable distances anyway the lattice will melt at least if you have Leonard Jones particles and have, you have significantly high temperature right. So, that is how you initialize the position of particles if you are introducing Leonard Jones particles is relatively easy, but you might also be ending up uh, introducing uh, or st wanting to study more complicated systems suppose a rod like molecule right or a polymer what is a polymer you have a polymer base where basically the monomers the particles which constitute the polymer right the monomers uh, assume them to be spherical and they can be connected by spring so you cannot necessarily in this case choose the position of n particles randomly because the constraint that the distance between neighboring particles on a polymer along the polymer chain they should be at a distance of approximately the bond length that has to be maintained right you cannot say that oh a bond is extremely highly stressed that is unphysical. So, typically you say okay the first particle is here the second particle is here the third particle is here you put them uh, basically keep on incrementing the position here, but then you have to be sure that the fifth particle basically sits here and not here because then this uh, because then basically this uh, bond would be extremely stretched and if it is extremely stressed then the force acting between these two particles is extremely high and then when you start the simulation or you run the iterations the, the extremely high forces can lead to a breakdown of the integration unless you choose extremely small values of dt which you do not want to do right. So, for Leonard Jones introducing particles is simple if you have more complicated systems you might have to take care how you want to introduce the particles, but let us stick to the simple case I just gave you a caveat a warning that one has to be careful Leonard Jones is relatively easy. Introducing the velocity well you could say that you know each particle is moving in random directions right at the beginning. So, you do not want to give the all the particles the same velocity they cannot be moving in all in a perfectly the same direction that would be again unphysical that is something like uh, all particles moving um, as a whole. So, this uh, it is moving it is like a river where all the particles are moving unless you want to actually simulate that, but let us first of all uh, consider a static liquid or a gas how would you model that because that is simpler if you are uh, modeling flows that is more complicated we will uh, leave it for uh, a future class or basically if and when you need it you can always learn that aspect. So, in general you want the velocity of all the particles to be in random directions more like uh, what you have the gas particles in this room they are all moving in all possible directions, but remember they have also in equilibrium the Maxwell Boltzmann's distribution of speed and velocity right. Uh, for simplicity you can say that you know what I want particles in random directions, but I am choosing their velocity from a uniform random number generator and as the particles move around in space they collide with each other and do if they are doing the right physics if we have modeled the right physics then we are going to generate uh, basically a Maxwell Boltzmann uh, distribution. In fact, that is going to be one of our tests that we are doing our uh, molecular dynamic simulations correctly. Okay. For simplicity case you say that okay, I am using a random number generator here right which generates random numbers between 0 and 1. Okay. The velocity of each particle is some amplitude which we will discuss how you choose that amplitude into random number minus 0 0.5 random number in minus 0 0.5 what does it do. So, random number would choose a ran uniform random number between 0 and 1 and if you subtract 0 0.5 from it then basically the range of that random number becomes uh, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So, you choose any random uh, value 
if you choose that to be v x, you choose another one to be v y, v choose generate a third random number and from that generate v z. So, some particles will be moving in the positive direction, some particles will have velocities negative values which is moving in the negative direction. So, on an average you essentially have uh, equal number of particles moving uh, right, equal number of particles on an average moving left that is how you start off. Then you have to ensure that your momentum in the x, y and z direction goes to 0, because if it is not exactly equal to 0 that means you have a box, you have a simulation box which has a center of mass velocity which means it is moving. You want to look at a stationary liquid. Right. So, after introducing the velocity of all the particles, you calculate the center of mass velocity of all the particles and subtract a certain small amount that exact amount from the velocity of each particle. So, that the center of mass velocity of the n particles becomes exactly equal to 0. Right. You have n particles half of them are moving to the left half of them to the right some on uh, um, uh, towards the camera some away from the camera some upwards and some downwards v x v y z v z and it goes from minus f minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 the question is what should be the value of e some amplitude there is no reason that it should be just simply you choose it from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 in fact the way you have to choose it is uh, once you have specified the temperature of the system, right? You know that the equipartition theorem holds half mv square average equal to half kBT for each degree of freedom. Basically, the value of A should be such so the average v square of n particles for each degree v x square average over n particles v y square average over n particles that should be equal to close to half k b t right that is what I have written here. So, half m v x v square or rather if you just take one particular degree of freedom half m v x square should be half k b t by m I mean m could be here and then and m you can choose even to be 1. Right. So, you want to choose a v x so that the average kinetic energy of the system is approximately half k b t and this condition essentially determines the value of a. So, how do we do it? So, we have to calculate the expectation value of v x square. What is v? v x say I mean one component is r minus 0.5 into and some amplitude a and that is exactly what we have to determine. And if you had to calculate v x square average because where n is large we are generating so many different uh, random values of uh, v x and similarly for v y and similarly for v z that if you average over all particles you will have fairly uh, good distribution. So, you can take a uh, uh, average v x square over the particles right. So, basically this v x square can be written as half half m v square half 0 to 1 because that is the range of minus 0 0.5 whole square into a square and that should be equal to half k b t. So, half of uh, this factor cancels and what you have is 0 to 1 a square I have just expanded this r square minus r plus uh, 0 0.5 whole square is 0 0.25 dr. Uh, basically, you are integrating over the entire distribution of random num numbers. So, that is why 0 to 1 uh, that is your range. So, r being the random number and that should be equal to k b t uh, by m right. And if you work out the algebra here and I have worked it out from here for you. If you integrate it, it becomes r cube by 3 minus r square by 2 plus 0 0.25 r 0 to 1 and that should be equal to k b t by m and if you work this out, you essentially get a equal to root 12 root k b t by m and that is how you choose your amplitude of um, a, uh, amplitude of the velocity. So, that when you start out your average velocity over n particles remains close to k b t.
whatever value of kbt you have chosen okay so now you have uh, we have discussed uh, initialization of position we have discussed initialization of velocities since you have positions you can call call calc force call calc calculation of force and you have the uh, initial uh, forces acting on each of these particles and now you are all set and nearly ready to basically go into the so called body of MD except that you still have some things to learn and that is the following as the particles start to move yeah you have a simulation box you have to either implement walls so that once the particle suppose is moving and this is the end of the simulation box when it goes it hits it should come back back into the box but often uh, when we are studying liquids we are basically studying practically an infinite number of particles and equal to 10 to the power 23 we are studying the system in bulk if you like and if you implement walls and you have some 1000 particles then there will be strong wall effects rather you want to study a system where all the particles are surrounded in all possible directions by identical copies of the system so that you do not uh, see confinement effects I think we discussed this similar stuff even for the Ising model right you want to basically simulate the system in bulk so that in each direction you have an identical condition there is an endless chain of endless uh, number of particles whichever direction uh, you see and that basically brings up the discussion of periodic boundary conditions where you say okay even if the particles go out from here they come in from the other side of the box right or else you can model walls and modeling walls is a pretty detailed uh, topic by itself you then uh, by having explicit more walls uh, you could uh, basically confine uh, all the simulated particles within the box and people do it uh, especially when they want to study nano fluidics or you want to see systems in a nano confinement and so on and so forth however if you want to compare with uh, classical statistical mechanics where you do not have confinement then you would rather be well off studying systems in bulk and then one would be better off using periodic boundary conditions so we have to discuss that the other point uh, is basically that as particles start to move as particles start to move uh, from the initial position and velocities the depending upon the interaction between particles they would increase the potential energy of the system or decrease the potential energy and similarly correspondingly the kinetic energy of the system also changes the average kinetic energy because the average kinetic energy of the system also changes because if the potential energy decreases suppose there is an attractive interaction all the particles come close together and set at the potential minima then the potential energy decreases to keep the energy constant the average kinetic energy of the system has to increase which means that the particles are moving around with higher speeds and half mv square average is equal to half kbt so if the average kinetic energy of the particles have increased then what you have is essentially that the temperature of the system has increased but you wanted to study the system at a particular temperature which you want to decide right so what we need is the concept of a thermostat thermostat is something which will keep the average kinetic energy at a value so that the temperature is maintained so that half uh, the 3 by 2 n kbt equal to half mv square your equipartition theorem which means the thermostat will either take energy out from the system readjust the kinetic energy of the system or put in energy into the system 
right that is exactly what you have in a canonical ensemble right. So, energy is lost on an, or energy is gained there are energy fluctuations. So, we must introduce a thermostat if you want to study a system at a particular n v t. If you do not have a thermostat then what you are essentially studying is n v e uh, ensemble where the number of particles the volume of the particles and the energy of the particles is constant and the physics of the problem of course decides which ensemble you shall choose we shall discuss both n v e and n v t ok. In today's class we will basically discuss the periodic boundary conditions and uh, thermostat shall be discussed in the next class and so how do we implement periodic boundary conditions so that so when do why do we need suppose this is a particular particle you have updated its position there are some forces acting on it and its position uh, gets modified it gets updated and such that the position of the particle is larger it, it goes out of the box and then you must put it back you should uh, basically uh, put it back here right so because it was out of the box and that is basically you should put it back here similarly if a particle goes out uh, from the top so it is again uh, the position of the particle is such that the value of suppose the y is y coordinate value is gr greater than l y then it should be put back into the box here because this is basically put it back from the other side uh, and similarly suppose a particle is a uh, position gets updated so that it position it moves to the left position x coordinate decreases and becomes great, uh, less than 0 even. You imagine the box is from 0 to L x, 0 to L y, 0 to L z, but suppose this position is such that it becomes less than 0 it depends upon the value of the force and the velocity of course, the magnitude and the sign of velocity and force if it becomes less than 0 then it should be put it back here. How do you implement that? how do you implement PBC uh, you basically you uh, if the position after the position gets updated let us look at that. So, here so your position update was happening here in the main body of the code and after its position gets updated here you write down the conditions to implement PBC and what do you write down you write down precisely this if position is greater than L x which means the position of the particle after update is here greater than L x then pos i equal to pos i means the ith particle really uh, you are also mentioning whether it is x or y or z it is pos i minus L x and if you are doing position y if you choose the size of the box so that in three different directions. Uh, L x and L y and L z are different then you have to be careful whether you want to subtract L x or L y or L z, but if you take a cubic box you are safe it's, uh, just for the sake of learning and then uh, basically L x equal to L y equal to L z then it does not matter right. And uh, if on the other hand some particle goes out here or goes out here or rather this way then if pos i is less than 0 then pos i equal to pos i plus L x which means it has gone here you are subtracting the length of the box and it will sit here whereas if it goes out from here you are adding the length of the box. So, you are basically adding the length of the box and it is going to sit here. So, as a consequence of periodic boundary conditions what you have you essentially have your main simulation box which is drawn here and as the particle goes out right. So, maybe from here right. So, that it can sit here or you could just put it back here. So, this putting it back here is the same as putting I mean if it goes out you are putting it back here uh, that is uh, what the PBC essentially does is that the main simulation box is surrounded by identical copies of the same box in all possible directions. So, hence you are seeing this system 
in uh, basically bulk because because in, in any direction you have essentially statistically similar systems. Of course, the size of the box should be significantly larger than the diameter of the box and if especially if you are near critical point there could be correlations and this correlations could extend to infinity. So, one has to be careful of course, but if you are away from the critical point which is the case we shall study in this case uh, basically correlations between positional correlations uh, die down between 4, 5, 6 times the diameter of uh, the particles and if size of the box is suppose 20 or 30 or 50 sigma then essentially statistically you have self similar system surrounding the main simulation box right. With that we shall end today's lecture and we shall discuss the other point uh, of uh, thermostat in the next class. Oh, thanks. <laughs>